This is Legislative Review on Prairie Public. I'm Dave Thompson. Thanks for joining us today. Our guest on the program is Senator Jerry Klein from Fezzenden. He's the Assistant Senate Majority Leader. Senator, thank you for your time today. Hey, great to be here, Dave. Well, let me just ask you about your job as the Assistant Leader. What does that consist of? Well, Dave, uh, I, I think primarily it's uh, managing the, uh, the floor session. Uh, you know, daily uh, that we work, the front desk works out a calendar. Uh, they run it by me seeing if, if this is the direction we need to go. Um, some bills need to be brought to the top because they're important as they relate to something that we need to pass early and get it to the other chamber. Um, and so every day, uh, shortly before we gavel in, I sit down while well, I stand uh, next to the uh, the, the lieutenant governor, who's uh, the president of the Senate, our presiding officer, and we kind of run through um, sort of just how you do it here. When before you start your daily uh, uh, show, you, you run through what's going to go on, how it's going to go, what I'm going to say, what motions are going to be made. And, and that's primarily uh, what I do. And, and uh, just to keep the, the, uh, the session uh, going for that particular day. So when you say motions to be made, you're, you're made aware of things like reconsiderations, uh, things like maybe... Uh, uh, yes, Dave, votes, uh, there, there is uh, someone will say, well, I, I, I need to replace uh, um, Meyer with Beck at all. I need, uh, I need to, uh, this bill isn't ready for prime time. We found a glitch in the amendment. We need to bring it back to committee. Uh, that would be, or someone will say, hey, I've got a floor amendment. Uh, how do I do that, Jerry? And, uh, and we, we run through that process. So everybody's ready to go. We try to be as efficient as we can with our time. Uh, and, and so it's always good to know some of those things in advance, but we, we try to work out the details uh, so it, it works smoothly, it runs smoothly, and everybody is comfortable with the, with the, amen, uh, the motions that there needed to be made. Now, there was a bit of a, a change in procedure for your position because if I remember correctly in the past, the assistant leader served on two committees. Well, uh, early on, uh, the leader... Uh, suggested that uh, maybe he needs more help, maybe he needs a little more support. And uh, if, I, if I would mind uh, stepping off of my B committee, which, you know, uh, A committees are meet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, B committees meet uh, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so I'm like, you know, well, let's see how that goes. I, and, and looking back, I'm suggesting I, I, I don't know how, how, how I used to squeeze all that other work in, but uh, this has worked out quite well, I believe. So there is a science to hurting cats, basically. Uh, well, absolutely. There's, there's, yeah. Things work out for various reasons, and in this particular case, they worked out well. So what is your role in terms of helping to set up conference committees? Well, uh, the the process is is relatively simple. If the House does not concur to an issue, um, a little sheet is made, uh, and it's brought back to the chairman of the committee. The chairman then uh, looks at the issue that the House, in our case, the House would have changed, and we, we agree or we disagree. We do not agree what they did. Uh, there's a form. Three, three members are selected from that particular committee. Uh, it's run through the majority leader. Uh, then it's run up to the desk. And then we, we make the announcement on the floor as to who will serve uh, with a light committee from the House on the various House bills. Now, this session has had a number of bills, so it's not that you're sitting around waiting for things to do. There's a, there's a lot of work to do. You know, Dave, I, th I think it, it does seem a bit different this time. Uh, you know, over the past few years, it's always been like hurry up and wait. Um, we are to the hurry up and wait stage, but it's only been like the last two days or three days. Uh, the calendar has had uh, a, enough stuff to work on uh, in the last two days. Uh, we will have a short session uh, at 445 today because I, we only had one bill left. The House has only needed to act on a couple, and I think they're coming over. But, but we're to the end. We're, we're, we have nine conference committees going, uh, almost all dealing with uh, appropriations. Uh, you know, there's some... Um, some ideas, some issues that have been re resolved. Uh, I know we, we're a little hung up yet on um, the human services budget, which is our biggest budget at 
5.5 billion or so, uh, primarily there, most of it being uh, federal money, but, but we've got some issues hung up there. So the Senate and the House have, are gonna have to agree so that we can get that going. Because th that, as you recall from last session, was the last one of the, well, was the last bill to be heard, I think, that late that evening. Yeah, that was the last bill. And one of the other last bills is the Office of Management and Budget Bill, which has been described as a Christmas tree or a kitchen sink bill. Uh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's that cleanup bill. Uh, as OMB, uh, OMB, Office of Management and Budget, deals with every, every aspect of, of government. So every issue that uh, uh, is, is, needs to have some tweaking can come to that. Uh, we find that there are some, some bills that were passed already. We found that there's a word incorrect. We find uh, an appropriation number incorrect. So that's gonna wind up uh, clean up there, but it also is a uh, low hanging fruit for people who are disappointed that their bill may not have passed. And now they're gonna look to see if they can uh, figure out a way to get that on onto the OMB budget, which sometimes disappoints me. That, and of course, the Senate rules allow amending from the floor, which the House does not. It does, but not for any conference committees. Uh, so you cannot amend uh, a, a conference committee report or divide a question uh, after it, it, it goes to conference. So it does change things a bit. Uh, however, I believe the governor has a little more latitude in uh, finding sections in there that he can uh, veto should he find it that he seems it unnecessary. Well, let me talk about some of the big issues that are, are now kind of settled. And, and one of the big things that has come to mind, it appears that tax uh, breaks or, or tax relief has been settled. Tax relief has been settled. Um, it, the, uh, the, uh, the tax team worked over the weekend to try to come to some resolution. It, they had, did I hear, 16 meetings. Um, you know, the House was pretty clear that they wanted uh, income tax relief. The Senate's message was we want property tax relief. Uh, it took, uh, I think it took a little intervention from the leaders to kind of suggest that we need to work together and provide some opportunity for both. And so the, um, I believe the income tax proposal is around 300 and some odd million. Um, th well, the, uh, the primary residence $500 tax credit in this biennium is 104 million, I believe, but that's only one year of the biennium. So it would be a 204, similar to the 20 mil buy down that we had sent over to the house originally. And then the homestead tax credit got increased by 53 million, which is a program that seems to have worked well. Uh, you know, our, our low income folks who are sitting in their home trying to hang on to their house um, would have an additional opportunity to have their taxes reduced on their home. Well, let me follow up on that. The Senate really took a stand on property taxes, and that's where they put the flag in the sand. House, as you mentioned, did an income tax thing. Why the difference? <sighs> well, there's personalities. Uh, you know, uh, the House has, for any number of years, has worked hard or been on a mission to reduce income or totally eliminate what I believe is that third leg of our, our, our tax stool. Um, you know, once again, we, we, we're income tax, uh, we're uh, sales tax, and we're corporate tax, which, which kind of uh, puts that, that chair together so that, you know, we need that revenue. Uh, but as the, the House continues to work at that, uh, we continue to lower our rates. Uh, I think the top one is 2.50 now. Um, and if you make uh, $44,000, there would be, on the lower end, you, you pay no income tax. So um, they, they've always leaned that way. We worked uh, since 2013 to, to do something with property tax. And currently we're in the billions of dollars of what we think we have sent out to, in property tax relief. The state doesn't collect property tax. And I think people are confused about that. It, that's a local tax, whether it's the school, whether it's the city, whether it's the county, uh, the parks, uh, you know, those are all local um, taxes that are collected. And I've often told people, I said, 
you got to go to your city council meeting if you're unhappy about the tax. You've got to go to your county commission meeting. Um, but oftentimes people just look to the state to uh, say, well, them, somehow it must be your fault and, and you should try to fix it. And in and, and, and this respect, in that respect, in listening to those people, we've, we've made some small attempts to do that. But that's, that's the interesting point. The state does not levy property taxes. The only one the state levied, and I think it's gone now, is the, the mill for the uh, med school, correct? Um, that was uh, proposed to, that was a constitutional, that was something that uh, the House didn't agree with the Senate. I don't recall exactly, Dave, on that, but that is the only property tax uh, issue that the state deals with. So when people say, you know, we got to eliminate property tax, I often say, you know, that's that's local. If if you want uh, your city to have a new uh, payloader or, or the county to have a new blade, do you really want to come to Bismarck and ask for that? Uh, should should we ever eliminate the property tax? And um, I, I, I think we, I prefer local control as to, to as much as we possibly can. And and so we've got to be more involved locally to, if, if we really want to uh, take a look at what we're doing at that level. I don't want to prolong the point too much, but the proposal that Senator Shively had, which was to use the, the required mill levy that a school has to levy to reduce that, and that's, that's immediate property tax relief, that didn't get any, any traction in the House. Well, you are absolutely right. Uh, uh, Senator Scheibler's proposal was just to kind of piggyback to the proposal that we did in 2013, which would what bought down um, over a billion dollars with the property tax relief. You know, there are some concerns that the local taxing districts uh, backfill that somehow, and that uh, you you didn't get to see any property tax relief. Or if you did, uh, you, it was just a very brief uh, period of time, maybe one year or two. But I guess we could argue that, uh, look where the cost of anything has gone in the last 10 years. Um, you know, I, I think of just coming to the legislature uh, 27 years ago and, and uh, you know, our, 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 our uh, hotel reimbursement was $600, uh, which now would be, it, it's totally, uh, was way, well, it was way too low then. And, and of course, now we're following the GSA rates and it, it does, things change. And yeah. uh, it, it changes for the counties, the cities, the state. Look at all those inflation factors that we're trying to do. That's why we're doing the six and the four uh, for state employee uh, pay raises because we've gotten a little behind here during this last major inflationary period. Now, that's, that is the, the thing that there was a, a lot of focus on that is to get that six and four for the state employees, six percent the first year, four percent the second year, as a way to help catch things up and also to try to address inflation. Uh, absolutely. I, I think early on uh, there was some discussion that was uh, kicked around. We needed a placeholder early on and, and we, we'd start with the four and four thing. And then after the second budget forecast or uh, economic forecast, we saw that there was going to be a, a, a little bit of additional revenue that helped us kick that extra 2% up. You know, and we do still pick up the entire employee's health care um, ticket, so to speak. Um, and, and that, by the way, that doesn't go down either. You know, those amounts to some millions of dollars. So I think overall, we've got a, a fairly decent package. But like anywhere in, a, in North Dakota, like anywhere in America, and in fact, we were traveling a, across the ocean, everybody's looking for help. And so that it's a very competitive sort of um, environment that we're currently in. And, and so we've got to we've got to try to stay close. So the six and four, hopefully we can provide an opportunity for or people to want to stick around. Now, I'm glad you brought that up, Senator, because one of the overriding themes going into the session Workforce development. Workforce is a real problem. We need to find a way to attract workforce to North Dakota or to get people back in the job market. How do you think the legislature has done so far on that? Well, um, you know, Dave, I, I think we've done a, a, a fairly... You're never going to do the best job you can. I think we, we've made a lot of attempts to take care of some of this licensing stuff where... Uh, somebody who has worked in another state in, in a particular field comes to North Dakota. Now they have to go through this licensing process. They can't get licensed here because they 
have maybe uh, different uh, training requirements, different work requirements, different educational requirements. We're trying to make, create some sort of uniformity. So we, we made some attempts in doing that. Um, you know, the workforce thing, you know, we, we did, I think we have passed now both sides on the uh, child care issue. Uh, it's going to be 60 some million dollars to try to help these uh, people who have decided that they should stay home because it's not worth going to work because my child care is so expensive or I can't go to work because I can't find child care. So um, this was all part of that whole workforce development thing to maybe we can provide some help. Um, you know, some could argue and, and some have argued that, you know, maybe, maybe mom or dad should stay home with the kids. Maybe that would help us in the long run. But at this point in, in North Dakota, I think it's workers and, uh, and people have to make those, those judgments. They have to make, parents have to make that call. But if this helps provide them some sort of ability to go to work, and knowing that, you know, once you're, if you leave your job and you're in a career, uh, if you take X amount of years off to stay home, you, you held yourself back a bit. So uh, this may help people uh, who have, are career driven. So we'll just have to see. But I think we, we're, we made, that was uh, the key. The Workforce Development Committee was formed. Uh, a lot of our bills were supposed to be signaled that uh, this helps workforce. And so, uh, you know, I, I think we, we we made a as as good of an attempt as we could, and I think we've corrected some of those things. You know, you mentioned that, and it was always it was jarring at first when I'd sit in in a, an appropriations committee hearing in the Senate, and Senator Bechtel would say, "Okay, does this relate to workforce?" Apparently, there was a reporting mechanism. Every committee was uh, was supposed to, as the motions were made, and this helps workforce, and uh, you know. If you look at the committee report, it, it was on each and every one, even if the motion wasn't made properly, because, you know, having been here a lot of sessions and working through the system, you maybe get, uh, you do things the way you used to or always did. Uh, and so some of those motions may not have been made properly, but the whole idea is how does this help workforce and can we compile all those things to show that citizens that there is an opportunity out there that we fix this or did this or help them with a board or, and and people can still reach out to legislators because, uh, you know, sometimes boards do, do what boards do. They they respect their, uh, the people they 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 support they they, they uh, uh, serve and so sometimes you get caught up in a glitch and and sometimes we can help work that through. Would you say that the legislature kept their eye on the ball when it came to workforce then? Well, I like to think that, uh, you know, we, we've, we've played a good first half. I think the, the next session will just kind of um, maybe continue to work on that and bring those things together so that we can move, uh, continue to uh, move. And, you know, the, uh, we, we've created this, uh, uh, this support person now at the Department of Commerce or persons. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, we, we learned of a lot of, of folks who are trying to come to America or to North Dakota legally. Uh, we know that our, our, our healthcare institutions are working with people who are bringing people here legally. Uh, and is there a way to help businesses through a, an agency that can say, hey, um, if you're looking for somebody, I know where that we have some, some legal, legal immigrants to come here and to help you. I know we, we've talked a lot about the Ukrainians now coming to work in Western North Dakota and the oil rigs, you know, those programs. That, but as a small, small uh, former merchant, you know, we, we sometimes don't know where to go and hopefully we've created a, like a, a, at least a, a place to call somebody and, and get some information. So the proof is going to be in the pudding, but it looks like it's set to, to, to have proof? Um, I, I think uh, the recipe has been followed. Um, it's all in the, uh, it, the cake has been made and now we have to bake it and see how, uh, see how it's gonna turn out. But I think, I think we're on the right track. Another one of the big issues that was talked about from almost the get-go was the retirement plan for, for new state workers. And the legislature has now passed a defined contribution plan. 
and will close the defined benefit plan to new hires starting in 2025. In 2020 hindsight, was that, was that the right move? Well, you know, we can always, um, you know, in the next 10 years, we'll look back and say, wow, that was a great idea, or wow, what were they thinking? Um, I think what we know is that in the last number of sessions, we've been all trying to figure out what to do to save our retirement program. And um, last interim, the committee worked really hard to develop a plan because this $1.8 billion upside down program, we've got to figure something out. There was a couple of proposals. One was uh, um, the, the Senate bill to provide more money from um, running the system the way we did now. But the new proposal that came from the House and was pretty overwhelmingly supported in the House was to go to this defined contribution to create a program where the only new employees, current employees are, are in till, till the day they retire, but the new employees now will be on a defined contribution, an opportunity to have portability, um, more involvement in your program. Uh, you, you, uh, you pass away uh, and you've got a retirement package. You, take, you don't take the package to the grave. You, you hand it off to your, uh, uh, your next of kin. So I think we're going to have to see how that all goes. You know, I, I'm, I was somewhat supportive of that only because we've got to, we had to take a different direction. But when I knew that it was not going to hurt any one of our current employees, that they should feel comfortable and confident and know this, this, the old program is not going to go broke. The state will be behind it. Uh, so, you know, there, there is, should be a peace of mind for the current workers. And I think the, the future workers who are, um, we, we find now too, that there's another statistic, Dave, you probably know that uh, the, the day of uh, Joe starting at the Capitol and working uh, 30 years, it, it doesn't happen anymore. We, we've learned that the, the new young workers are, are moving around, finding different opportunities, especially now in this, this new environment that we're in, where uh, you know, wages continue to, to kind of accelerate. People are stealing somebody from the, you know, it's not like we're creating a bigger workforce, we're just shuffling the people around. So the proof will be in, if this works, to attract the younger workers who at least will stay for a few years and then maybe look at something else. And that's just the way the world. Yeah, I, I think that's the way the world is. I think the, you know, uh, there were some who would suggest, should this be the burden of the taxpayers? And that's, it is now, and it will be for the next few years because we still have that, that 1.8 billion unfunded that we're gonna have to make sure, the way I understand it, make sure that those people are taken care of, that that remains, those folks are, that program remains solvent to take care of everybody that's currently in it. So, yes, it's going to be, a, it's, it's another, uh, it's another, what we believe is uh, an advantage. I think it, it, it will turn into an advantage when, when we're trying to recruit new workers. Now, on a different topic entirely, the, there's been a kind of a change in how highways are going to be funded in North Dakota because gas tax is not living up to it with new gas cars that are much more fuel efficient, electric cars coming in. There are another ways that, are, that the legislature is looking to help match federal highway dollars, correct? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we're falling a bit behind. If we want to make that federal match, which is really critical to keeping our roads, our bridges, uh, our state highways, our federal highways up, up and running, um, We've, got, we've had to figure out different ways to, to fund that. Um, what, one of the issue, one of the ways is uh, we, we've redirected some of the streams money. Uh, today we carry that uh, 1379, which has a, a stream of, mm, I can't remember, 100 million. Something it's like a lot of money uh, yeah. to help the DOT, uh, the Department of Transportation, match those federal dollars so we can continue to keep our roads um, up and running and improved and you know uh, of course this is the time of the year where you complain about the potholes you complain about all the bumps um, where the barrels are starting to come out here on state street and there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of action there so uh, those and then we, we did some additional help for the townships the counties and townships have been asking for help for the last 
for a while. And, and you know, as those costs of, of repair and, and replacement continue to grow, um, I think we made some strides this session to give them some opportunity to have additional revenue so we can get some more of that work done. So in about the minute we have left, what are the sticky wickets left? Well, I think the sticky wickets uh, is is the uh, like I said the Department of Human Services budget. Um, there is uh, some concerns about Medicaid expansion. Um, the Senate likes it. The House, well, everybody is, understands it, but how much of, of that do we want to fund? Um, you know, I think there's going to be a. I think there's going to be consensus, and the rest, uh, most of the rest of the things, we're working hard to uh, understand why some legislators put their pet projects in and, and, and to have them explain why this is almost utterly uh, the most important thing that will ever come. But, uh, and so working those, through those things, I think today by this evening, most of that will be worked out and uh, we should be on the right track to hopefully we can get her done tomorrow night. Well, that's great. Senator, thank you for your time. It goes very fast. It did go very fast, Dave. Our guest, Senator Jerry Klein from Fezzenden, he's the Assistant Senate Majority Leader. For Prairie Public, I'm Dave Thompson, and just a shout out to Madeline, who hosted the last two weeks for me.